Hello everybody, this is Davina from Teacher Success Coach. How are you guys doing? Right, it has been an interesting week with a number of challenging triumphs and pluses and minuses, etc, etc, etc. Right, um, what am I grateful for? Ooh, I am grateful for lots of things. There's sometimes we need to listen to our intuition. Uh, there's sometimes our intuition is telling us something to do and there are times we just go against it. When you tell me you go against it, that's when you're in trouble. For me, I need to listen to it a lot more because today was one of those days when I should have listened and I didn't. Because I had something to do at another school and, um, and my intuition was telling me that there's no point in going. And I still went and I had so many challenges trying to get to that school that when I came back, I reminded myself the importance of listening to my gut feeling, some people say, or either feeling, whatever you want to call it. We need to listen to that more because it's never is wrong. It's our, when we start using our head to rule us, that's when we go wrong. And I use my head to rule me, so that when the problem was. Because if I've actually used my gut feeling or my in my tuition or however I want to call it, I would not have been in that situation I was in today. Because one of the there's issue there was issue with the train and it took me I left my normal school after ten and I didn't get to the other school until ten past one. And that would normally be a thirty seven minutes journey. But throughout the time my God feeling was saying to me, where are you going? You need to go back. You need to turn back. But I was still determined. Yes, yeah, sometimes determination is good. But then sometimes we need to listen to our inner feeling, our inner, our inner voice. Our inner voice is far more important and powerful than listening to the head. So that was a reminder for me today. What am I grateful for? Oh my goodness, there's so many things to be grateful for. I'm grateful for life. I'm grateful for my bed. I'm grateful for the opportunity I had today. Although it was very challenging, but I've learned a lot from that. I'm grateful for the school I'm in. There's some fantastic thing in the school. Yes, there's some challenges in the school, but there's some fantastic thing in the school. You know, one of the things this school, I do feel the school is, um, one of the pluses is staff well-being. They're really on the ball of that, and that's really is important to me, especially now when a number of staffs, you know, then a number of staff would have sick because of challenges, because of, you know, health issues. And when you have schools that are very, taking those very, very seriously, that's very, very important because that is an important factor, staff health and well-being. Because... If you're in a school and they're not taking care of your, or they don't consider your health and well-being as priority, you don't have to be there. There are too many schools out there. There's so many, um, you know, teachers out there that are leaving their the profession, etc., etc. It doesn't even have to be teaching any job. There's no point in you staying in a job that the the employer not interested in your health and well-being. There's no point in that because remember, you are the one that is bringing in the money for them, right? They need you on their staff. So they need to start valuing you as a value member of staff. So that's something you need to take, become aware of. Take charge of that. You need to take charge of your health and well-being. Sometimes it means stepping out of your comfort zone, i.e. moving out of that place of work and finding something else. Because right now, the most important factor is your health and well-being. And if you're in a job and they're not taking health and well-being very important, you don't need to be there. Because so many people are having challenges with the health. And if you're in an organization and the company, the CEO or the director is not putting your health and well-being as a priority, huh, there's no need for you to be there. Because if your health is not taken as seriously, if your health is not taken seriously and your well-being is not taken seriously, how could you be productive to the company? Think about that. Right. Um, what else? Yeah, I was just saying the things I'm grateful for, etc. Well, this week have been, as I said, have been, it had its ups and downs in terms of challenges. 
Every day there was fighting at the school. Every day there was a fight at the school, I mean. Every day there's something going on with the students. On the, today is Friday. On Wednesday, there was a big fight at the school. So on Thursday, the principal had to speak to all the year 10s because there were so many issues with the year 10s. As if they're on fire, you just have to touch them and they explode. You know, these young people are facing challenging time right now. So as adults, yes, we are facing challenging times ourselves, but as adults, you still have to support them the best way you can. Because the slightest thing, they're off. And you actually see it in terms of the students and the teachers. I said to one of my students yesterday, I am not arguing with children. I've asked you to move because you're talking and you're refusing to move. Just get out of my class. This is not on the debate. And then I put you on a detention. So get out and I put you on a detention. There's no debate. And as adults, we need to start having boundaries. We should not be arguing with children. And too often I've seen adults standing there arguing with young people and it goes back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. No, there's no value in that. They need to know who is the adult. And if it's a situation where that is not happening, you need to step back and, and let it be and find alternative way of dealing with it. My phone. You know, so those are the things you need to look at in terms of you getting yourself all worked up when you know you you're having a conversation with a young person and they're becoming challenging etc no you leave it there's no point in that there are too many issues going on for you to get yourself as a big as an adult getting yourself involved in a in a you know situation like that with young people no that's that's no point in that so that's me that's been that's what's been happening in the school this week, where, you know, the students are constantly at it. They're arguing, they're fighting, you know, you name it, you name it, you name it. And we have also been exam week as well, because some students have a finishing of their exams. So that's another thing, because as I said, a lot of them have never done exams before, and now they have to do exams. So that is also challenging because they don't know what to expect. Expectation is unknown for them. So that is causing them a lot of challenge. And this is the end of the A-level week. Yeah, my students finished the A-level this week. And it's been really good because they're coming and find me after the exams and say to me, Miss, it was really good. And, you know, I did well, etc. So that's, that feels good. I just hope that the result really shows that because it's new for them. They have not had that before and now they're feeling good about it. They're empowered because the exams turn out to be better than they expected. So that's good. Well, for my GCSEs, I'm not too sure it's up and down, up and down. It seems like the A-level results, it seems like the A-level, um, the A-level exams were much better than the GCSE exams because there seems to have a lot of challenges with the GCSE exam where examination board have told students, you know, have given one direction and then, you know, the students have revised the incorrect things. So there seems to be issues with the GCSE exams. So, so far there have not been many with my exams, with my students, but ha there have been a number of issues like that with my sons you know and he coming home saying oh you know the uh, the biology exam da, da, da. so there have been a lot of issues around that as well right next week my students are on um, work placement so my uh, 12 students are on work placement so that's quite nice for me it means I could mark my exam scripts but I've got my year 10 students still around because they've had placement already. So next week is the start of year 10 exams. So there's another set of anxiety coming my way because I've got year 10 psychology and sociology starting next week. We started to revise yesterday. But as I said to them, I'm not happy with the way they revise it because I'm giving them work to revise and they're not doing it. What I'm beginning to find is students seem to want, 
you to hand everything to them on a plate. They don't believe in working for something. They don't believe that, that they have to find information themselves. They don't believe that they have to do the research themselves. They seem to think that research and things should be done for them. And that's a challenge. And, edu and parents need to encourage the children to start doing their own research. I don't know what's going on with my phone. It seems to just be cutting off. You know, and I've had this challenge from last week where, you know, I'm on a, and I'm on a live or and I'm on a call. And the phone just seems to be doing its own thing. It's cutting off. Yes, as I was saying, a lot of parents, carers, guardian, 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 guardians need to support the young people. They need to do their own research. Too often, young people feel that the teachers have to give them everything. They don't believe in, oh, you need to go to the library, research on your topic, you know, find what you need, and then start doing the assignment. No, 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 no. You need to do all of that for them. One student said to me, no, miss, your job is to give us everything we need to do. And all we have to do is just write it. No, my job is to empower you, to give you the skills so you could do the research yourself. You know where to find it. And then you do the research and then you start doing your assignment. That's what my job is, to empower, not disempower. And too often when you do everything for students, you are not empowering them, you're disempowering them. So parents, guidance, guidance um, carers, you need to encourage young people to use the library. You need to encourage them to do the research. Because when they don't do those research and they then go to university or they go to do further studies, they are stuck. And when it comes to them actually writing something to, for you, you look at writing from postgraduate students, you're thinking, really? These students have degrees and when you look at what they're writing, you ask yourself, have they done any college, you know, work as they say they've done? You know, it's quite sad when you look at the work they're, you know, the work they're producing for you and they've actually gone to university and have a degree. You know, the work is really, you quite, you have to question it because some of them could hardly write. And that also have to do with how much are they actually using the skills that they've got to do the reading. They don't do reading. I was saying to a group of students today, I said to them, every terminology that you're using in psychology or sociology, they are English dictionary terminology, but have been used in a psychological, sociological, or health perspective. And students don't seem to be able to grasp that. Because what should I was saying to me today, means what does omission mean? I said, no, 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 you're going to be telling me in a minute. You know, yes, he told me, but I had to really draw it out of him. And these are basic words. So it's quite concerning. Yes, I know they've had COVID, etc. as I keep on repeating, but at the same time, we need to encourage these young people to read because they're not readers. They're not reading. And when they're not reading, it's affecting the outcome in terms of when they write something or even their ability to discuss. So we really do need to help them to start going into those dialogues because it's becoming is becoming an issue, a real issue in terms of their ability to hold conversation. You know, it, it's it's just quite alarming that aspect of it. Okay, guys, I will see you on Monday. Educators out there, you now on the weekend. Do not do any work. This is your weekend. Do not feel guilty for doing nothing. You need to set boundaries. The boundaries, the boundaries that you now need to set is self-love and self-care. Taking time off and doing no work over the weekend, it's fine. You've earned it. Because at school, you are actually chasing the students, chasing the work and constantly marking. So it's weekend now. Just take time off for yourself. Spend time in nature. Spend time in your bed if you need to do that, if that works for you. 
spend time going for a walk. If you go shopping, just go shopping. Do not pick up the book this weekend. Do not mark this weekend. When you're going to school on Monday morning, then you're going to be dealing with it. You need to have some time for you. I did come home with some work to mark. And as I told myself when I was coming home, it's going to ride back on Monday. When I go into school on Monday, I'm going to start looking at it and marking it very quickly. This is my weekend. I'm not doing any marking. So educators out there, you need to actually do that. And don't tell me, oh, I can't. I've got so much to do. Really? Let me just tell you something. If anything happened to you and you, you're off sick, you are replaceable. Do not be fooled that you cannot be replaced. You could be replaced very quickly and very easily. So don't feel that, you know, this, this school depends on you. Yes, right now as you're here, they depend on you. But when you're gone, they find alternative. It's like this young woman in one of the organizations I'm in. I think she's in her 30s. This is a second heart attack. Hear me? Second heart attack. Because education is so stressful. The job is so stressful. Really? No, sir. You need to take care of yourself. It doesn't even matter whether or not you're not in education. Any job you're in, you need to take care of yourself. No one will take care of you for you. No one love you as much as you love yourself. Remember, when you're in an organization, you're working for the company. You're not working for yourself. Even though you're working for yourself, you need to set boundaries. You need to take some time off. Anyway, guys, take care of yourself. Love up on yourself. Buy yourself something fantastic. Spend, it doesn't even have to be by yourself. It could be just be spending time with you and loving yourself. I.e. spending time in nature with yourself. Spending time listening to music. You know, just going to your bed and lying in your bed. That might work for you. Whatever works for you, you do it. Take care, stay blessed. Love up on yourself. Bye-bye.